On today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create a multiple language website with Webflow in a click of a button, stay tuned. Hey everybody, what is up? Welcome to another Webflow Weekly. And today I wanna to talk about multilingual websites. Well, up until now, there was no easy way to do this with Webflow. You basically had to duplicate your pages or fields in your CMS to create different languages. However, Bob from our Webflow Flux team here found a really, really cool hack to do this using Google Translator. Now, this thing is pretty much a hack and it might not be perfect, but check this out because you might find this super, super valuable. So here's a page with just basically just some random text in it. And as you can see here, we have a drop down with all languages. And what will happen is right now our default is English, but if we go down here and look for something like um, Russian, for example, bam, our whole page is now going to be translated. And you can see right now it's in Russian in Cyrillic, or I can go here, let's look for Spanish, bam, you can see, well, we didn't uh, adjust for the uh, styles to accommodate um, like when it's a little bit longer, but you can see that all the text, in, including CMS items, has been translated using Google Translator, which you know is not perfect. However, it's still very, very useful, and I'll show you in a second how easy it was to do. Um, you can use Japanese language or even Hebrew, um, you can actually see how this looks like. And so let's get down and see, maybe this is useful for you. Maybe you can implement this with just a few lines of custom code in your website and turn it into multi-language websites. Of course, everything from the look of this dropdown to its location can be customized. Um, here's how this set up in, inside of Webflow. So basically we have here, um, basically an embed website. Let me just find it. All right, so in this banner, we have some embedded code element. And basically what we have here in this code is, let me open it up. And there's basically just a div here with an ID of Google Translator. And we have the style of this element, um, which is called Google Translator. And in our page code, custom code, there is some code here in the head and some code here in the body. So basically this is the code that triggers this um, Google Translator. And in order to host a little bit of custom code, what we did is we put the code inside of a text file and we basically uploaded the text file here into the Webflow assets. So if you can go here and open it up, you can see that this is a bunch of code. And because you can't upload here kind of like JavaScript files or something like this, we had to name this text file, but it doesn't really matter. So we're basically calling it here from the custom code section. And here we have basically just a styling, um, declaring how this thing looks like. And basically by default, this component comes with a little bit of a background. So we have to make sure that we're actually putting the color of our background into this background um, CSS property just to make sure that it looks good and Google doesn't add some kind of its random color inside your website. And uh, yeah, basically this is how it's set up. You can actually see here, I think, yeah, that we've set the default language to be English. Um, so EN is the code for English, but you can basically customize this for anything that you want. Again, this is a hack. It's not 100% fully customizable and trustworthy um, multiple language solution, but it might be helpful for you because it's so easy to set up. So I'm gonna share below this video um, the link to this, um, to this project which you can come in, you can copy and paste the code or download the text. I hope you find this helpful and I'll see you in another Webflow video next week. Assuming the world doesn't crash in the meanwhile, we can still come to the office and record video for you. Stay healthy, lots of love, and see you on the next video.